Hi, I'm Nan Simonson, and I wrote Aging Powerfully when I turned 70. That was two years ago. And in the foreword of the book, I wrote, my wish for us all is to fully grasp that we have the power within us to alter the direction of our health and therefore our life. I dedicated this book and the rest of my life to taking command of what we can and to aging powerfully. I look around me and I think, oh my goodness, we can be so much better. We can be so much stronger as a nation if we were healthier but we're getting larger, sicker, more used to living on medications every year. And it doesn't have to be that way. Think of your friends, your family, maybe your health. Is it declining to the degree that one medication is added to the other? It doesn't have to be. So in my attempt, in my fervor to make a difference as I age with power, and I see others in the lifestyle medical practice that I'm a health coach with, age with power. I am convinced that we all can. So I put together a package, if you will, a food and fashion show to make a point. I'm letting what you see behind you and what I'm wearing, the little black dress, be a metaphor for part of what we were taught in the College of Lifestyle Medicine, that branch of medicine that is helping people get well, but more important, stay well and reverse chronic diseases. The nutrition pillar of the College of Lifestyle Medicine tells us that a whole food plant forward diet, if it's not exclusive, but at least plant forward, is going to help us add years to our life. I took it all the way and almost five years ago decided that my husband and I, who was all for it, were going to be 100% exclusively plant-based uh, and we are. And we're both, we feel, at least at this point, aging backwards. So what am I offering here today? I'm going to do a food and fashion show, but first there's going to be some education, some information, and then we'll get into the fashion show. And I hope that I can inspire you to see how easily you can take steps to make everything in your life, including maybe <laughs> getting dressed in the morning a little easier. So I'll do my screen share and let's get this thing rolling. Okay. So what I eat and what I wear, a food and fashion show, what was that all about? Well, it's about seeing that little black dress as a metaphor for a part of a whole food plant-based diet that we can, I'll say, take control of more easily than any other to make a whole food plant-based diet satisfying and something you look forward to taking advantage of every day. So enjoy the show. That is Coco Chanel. When she was young, her name was Gabrielle, Gabriel. Her mother died at 11 and her father who couldn't care for her put her in an orphanage in the French countryside. When she relates this and she was a woman, died at 88, when she was a woman who believed that if things weren't as you wanted them to be, find something about them that can inspire you or give you strength. And she says about that time that in the orphanage, that the blessing of that was that she learned three, three things. She learned to write, she learned to read, and she learned to sew. And that was the gift that kept her going through her entire life. She said, my life didn't please me, so I created my life. And she did that as a designer. In 1926, Coco Chanel, believing that women could be elegant, dress beautifully, um, be fashionable, 
And this was post World War One. Money was very scarce in the entire world. And she was, I'll say, swimming upstream in terms of fashion recognition because at that time, only servants or the poor or someone in mourning wore black. So she got a lot of criticism by fashion designers in France, but she moved forward. And on the Vogue issue in America, the American Vogue issue in um, 1926, her little black dress was featured. It took off what she's wearing in that photograph of her looking as elegant as she did from her younger years to her older years. That dress that she was wearing was a, 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 a um, part of that style that we're talking about. This was a drawing that she um, put out there in those early years. The Americans grabbed for it. Why was it referred to as the Ford? Because the Ford was something that was affordable. It was reliable. It could get you where you wanted to go. And she saw a lot of um, similarities. And so in America, we called her way of dressing the Ford or her dress, the little black dress, the Ford. These are some iterations of that, simple, practical. And then you look at Audrey Hepburn in Breakfast at Tiffany's. No, this wasn't a Chanel dress. She wore this in the 60s for the movie. But by the same token, the little black dress had been at that point um, incorporated into our fashion lexicon. Simplicity is the keynote of all time elegance. Well, simplicity can translate to food as well. This was one of her signature looks, this little jersey jacket and skirt that was really inspired by what she saw the tweeds actually in England became a signature look for Coco Chanel. To learn more about her, you can read one of many books, Pearls, Perfume, and the Little Black Dress. What does that mean? Well, she set things off with pearls. She liked the look of black. She liked gold if she was wearing a medal, and she loved pearls. She was considered in her lifetime, and even now, the House of Chanel is a billion-dollar business, but she was considered um, to be the world's most elegant woman. Be who you are, not who the world wants you to be. She hammers that home again and again. The best color in the world is the one that looks good on you. So if you're thinking, but I don't look great in black, well, hang in here. <laughs> she believes black looks great on everyone, but are believed. But by the same token, wear what color you love, but still take lessons from the little black dress. One is never overdressed or underdressed with the little black dress. That was Carl, Carl Lagerfeld. And in a whole food plant-based culinary closet, the little black dress is a metaphor for whole food fiber-rich starches. You'll understand what I mean by this in just a bit. They are the healthy basis of a whole food plant-based lifestyle. So little black dress representing whole food fiber-rich starches. Seven reasons the little black dress and whole food starches rock. Well, what I say about the little black dress applies to those most satisfying and satiating starches that we add to and is the foundation of a whole plant-based or whole food fiber-rich plant-based diet. It's flattering on every woman, every shape, every size. It can be styled up or down with endless possibilities. It can be worn literally anywhere. It goes from day to night with ease hides a multiple of sins from minor flaws, meaning in the presentation, to even body imperfections. It's effortlessly discreet. You can go um, 
or it is your go-to for those moments when you want to look your best but blend in in other words it doesn't have to stand out although it often does and it can be inexpensive and yet make anyone at any time look and feel glamorous that applies to what you can do with food i've always thought that accessories or i've always thought of accessories as the exclamation point of a woman's outfit michael kors well there are accessories in the whole food plant-based universe and I'll explain that to you. Pythagoras was our Coco Chanel, but 2,500 years ago, as it relates to food. What do I mean? We consider Pythagoras the mathematician who gave us the Pythagorean theorem, something that my husband, as soon as he heard the name Pythagoras, rattled off his theorem. Well, Pythagoras was also a humanitarian. As he said, animals share with us the privilege of having a soul. The soul is the same in all living creatures, although the body is different. And he believed that we shouldn't eat meat and fish. He was, at that time, a vegan, but there was no word for that. He was a vegetarian. And that wasn't even part of our nomenclature. So his Pythagorean diet, which was described that way for hundreds of years, um, actually a couple thousand years was a no fish, no meat diet. Another notable was Hippocrates. He was a physician and a vegetarian, as were so many notables throughout history. Actually, the first actual vegetarian or vegan society with those words coming into common use didn't even um, emerge until the mid 1800s and that was in England. But uh, Hippocrates word was heard loud and clear to let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food. Unfortunately, those who make our food in this country don't care about our health. And those that care about our health, in other words, the medical field doesn't really look at what we eat. There's something missing here, and this is what we're talking about today. We have other leaders in the field, such as John Robbins, who back, who back in the 1980s talked about a diet for the new America that was good for the planet as well as good for our health, and that was a whole food plant-based diet. Joel Furman, who is a contemporary earlier in the, this, um, in the, Oh, I believe it was 2000 and I don't know, 10, 12, talked to us about uh, a nutritarian diet, a diet that was whole food plant-based and focused on how nutritious these foods were for our body and how they could extend not only lifespan, but also health. The Blue Zones more recently proved that the longest living people in the world, the five blue zones around the world, highlighted the longest living communities of healthy people. We have one, and I'm in Southern California. We have one in America, and that is in Southern California, about 15 minutes from me, the Seventh Day at Venice community of Loma Linda, California. What was the commonality of these blue zones? They were whole food plant predominant. They weren't strictly vegan, but they were plant predominant. 80% of their diet was starch. Fiber fueled, what is that about? The whole food plant-based starches, in other words, the fiber that we get from food, all plant foods, but especially the starches, are what feed what we call our microbiome. That is our gut that we have come to realize is the center of the production system of our neurotransmitters. Those are those feel-good chemicals of our cardiovascular health because of short-chain fatty acids affecting not only our, our arteries and veins, but also every organ and every cell in our body. Those are metabolites from the the 
the short chain fatty acids are metabolites from the gut bugs, the trillions of microorganisms that are part of the microbiome. And what do they eat? One thing, fiber. Is there fiber in anything but plants? No. And then finally, Dr. McDougall talked about the starch or in his starch solution book after 40 years of treating patients, he still believes that the more rice, corn, potatoes, sweet potatoes, and beans we eat, the trimmer, more energetic, and healthier we become. Do you see how different that is than what we've been taught? And you still hear it from people. And we'll talk about that in a minute. This, or uh, as the little black, black dress is to your wardrobe, whole foods that are fiber-rich starches are to your whole food plant-based culinary closet. Coco Chanel said, fashion fades, only style remains the same. And I'll say fads fade, only evidence prevails. Thus the wisdom of the whole food plant-based diet. What are some of these fads we're talking about? Well, again, we'll look at that in just a bit. Beauty begins the moment you decide to be yourself. Don't spend time beating on a wall, hoping to transform it to a door. What does that mean? Well, that could be life circumstance. You take what you've got and you make what you can out of it. But that also means acceptance of who we are and making that the best we can. I want to introduce you to Elisa Cortez. She has a lot to do with these photographs that I'm able to incorporate into this fashion show, the little black dress photographs. Elisa was a, at a camera store that I brought my uh, 35 millimeter to, and she is an expert on cameras and she's a photographer. And I asked her if she could help me put together a, um, a collection of photographs and my little black dresses, because I've always believed that if we can get control of the basics in our diet or in our wardrobe, everything can be easier. She did the photographs and you'll see the, um, the results of her work. Whole food starches offer satiety, satisfaction, and a healthy fit bottom, our body. That is so different from what most people believe. Many people believe that starches are the bane of our uh, of, of health. And that began way back 60s, 70s, 1960s, 1970s, especially in the 70s, when Dr. Adkins con um, convinced the world that if we eat fat and protein, and stay away from starches will be healthier. Well, how has that worked for us in this country? We eat more protein than just about any country in the world. We eat more fat, and yet we're getting sicker by the year. It didn't work out so well. That's me being happy. <laughs> when I finally figured out that I could eat to satiation, to satisfaction, the foods that my body seemed to like best, which were the starches. It absolutely not only put a smile on my face, but it saved me. For if you read um, Aging Powerfully, for 55 years, I struggled with an eating disorder. Started when I was 14 with anorexia. At 15, it became bulimia. And I struggled off and on with that into my 60s. It's been more than five years now that I've been able to leave that behind. And one of the things that I point to is the fact that with a whole food starch heavy, I eat 70 to 80% of my calories from starch. My metabolism is balanced. My microbiome is fed, even though we didn't know anything about what the microbiome did, which affected neurotransmitters like serotonin, dopamine, and those feel-good chemicals. And I was able to transition from food fears as my primary motivator to loving a plant-based diet and not fearing, and yet maintaining not only a healthy weight, but actually getting smaller 
in the meantime because um, those foods nourish you and fill you up and yet are very slimming if you're eating a um, planned, a well-planned plant-based diet. And I'll talk about that. So carbohydrates, are they healthy? Heck yes. A whole food plant-based diet includes 80% of its calories from carbohydrates. They're not our enemy. In the blue zones, the populations eat 50 to 80% of their calories from carbohydrates, and they are consistently protective. This um, institution, True North in Santa Rosa, California, is a fasting center, whole food, plant-based, SOS-free. What does SOS represent? Salt, oil, sugar-free. And it is a fasting center that has for, is it over 40 years or longer, cured what some thought were intractable diseases by fasting. Our body, as, as Hippocrates said, that a physician should never feed a fever, meaning that fasting is something that can actually cure disease, and they have found that to be so. Well, I spent 10 days there not because I fasted or wanted to fast, but I wanted to learn. I had already decided I was going to be on a plant-based diet. I was already a health coach with Lifestyle Medical here in Riverside, California, under Dr. Wayne Dysinger, who is one of the founding members of the College of Lifestyle Medicine. And prior to that, ran the Department of Preventative Medicine at our esteemed Loma Linda University Hospital. I, under that tutelage, came to realize this is the way that I wanted to eat the rest of my life. So I went to True North to learn what they had to teach me. So throughout the day, this buffet was out. Here were our starches, potatoes and grains and um, of varying kinds. That was asparagus at the far end. But this was what we can call the accessories. As with the little black dress, the little black dress as it relates to our whole food plant base is the metaphor for our starches. In other words, the basics and the rest of it were accessories. The accessories included really where we get a lot of our nutrient density, the greens and the fruit and uh, vegetables, mushrooms every day, sprouts, salads, fat-free, no oil, salad dressings. And this is what they looked like on a plate. There was always soup. You had your grains, you had your beans, your vegetables, your greens. What does that look like on a plate? I'm showing you the Canadian food guide. In other words, the healthy plate on the Canadian's um, website for um, the, the Canadian Dietary Association, because unfortunately our healthy plate is still heavily influenced by industry. Who is industry? Meat, fish, processed foods, dairy, and it's very hard to get a clean looking plate. I'll use the word clean, meaning a, a plant slanted plate in America because unfortunately those um, industries are too powerful and unfortunately have a lot to do with decisions that are made in the uh, upper echelons of our, um, well, decision-making branches. So if you look at this plate, half of it is fruits and vegetables, starchy vegetables, leafy greens, the other quarters are grains, and then up above the protein source. Now that protein source can be from meat, but we're encouraging it to come from protein sources that are plant-based. They burn cleaner. They are um, more or a lot less um, uh, damaging in terms of oxidative stress and Research has shown that people who are plant-based and get their proteins from plants live longest. So quarter protein, quarter grains, half fruits and vegetables, and um, we'll take it from there. With good basics, 
you'll have endless options. That's true in one's closet, and that is absolutely true with a whole food plant-based diet. And nothing is prettier than when you're looking at plants instead of a slab of meat and some things thrown in on the side, a couple of stalks of asparagus and some bread and butter and dairy. Instead, we have these foods that if we learn to love them, will love us back. Every one of these foods have phytonutrients, phytochemicals, vitamins, minerals, enzymes. Well, there couldn't be anything better for us. Why am I showing you a stock pot? Because if you're going to spend time with a whole food plant-based diet, you want some very basic things in your in your refrigerator or freezer, and a broth is one of them. We use only vegetable broths, not, not um, meat broths of any kind. And I do this easily by keeping a gallon Ziploc freezer bag in my freezer and all the scraps from vegetables, scraps from onions, scraps from carrots when I peel them, scraps from greens, uh, things that are started to wilt or starting to wilt like my parsley and my cilantro, they all go into the stock pot. I get a beautiful stock that I can then freeze and add to everything. And you'll see what I mean as we go through the fashion show. Whole food starches are nature's antidepressant and appetite suppressant. This is absolutely true. The most satiating starch has been shown to be the potato. Starches let you feel full and satisfied. Some people try going whole food plant-based and can't do it because they feel hungry. That's because they're limiting their starches. They're not eating enough whole food plant-based starches. Why do I keep saying whole food plant-based? Why don't you just say vegan, man? Well, because the big difference is a vegan diet can be Oreos and Coke. Those are vegan, but they're not healthy. Whole foods mean food as close to nature as possible. The whole apple, not the apple fritter, which could be vegan if it didn't have any butter fat or lard in it. Whole food means that it's as close to nature as possible, as whole as possible, because what did we look at earlier? The fiber feeds the microbiome. In order to be irreplaceable, one must always be different, Chanel says. Well, unfortunately, those of us who are whole food plant-based are swimming against the tide because again in our country almost every ad almost every restaurant almost every fast food um, establishment and certainly the food industries make their money not from simple apples but from taking our food and turning it into things that aren't natural 62 to 65 percent of the diet of the average American is processed foods, things the microbiome doesn't even recognize, things that are inflammatory. It's no surprise we have problems with chronic diseases. Let's look back at what some of those foods are. Okay, potatoes, every kind of potato. You may say, oh my gosh, I can't eat potatoes. They're fatly. No, they're not. We'll talk a little more about that in a bit, but this is what I do every week, three pounds of potatoes, cook them in the, the Instapot for 10 minutes if it's just a standard size as opposed to the larger ones, which is 11 or 12 minutes, and then refrigerate it. Refrigerating a cooked starch is a good thing. It creates a resistant starch that gives that much more to that microbiome. In other words, resistance means that we don't, um, we don't digest it that well, it goes right on through to the microbiomes and feeds those uh, microbes. That's a good thing. It actually even reduces the calories in that food because it's not digested. In addition, two one to one and a half pound sweet potatoes go into my Breville oven. That could be my regular oven. I just love this little Bre Breville air fryer because it, it, um, it's an air fryer, it's a roaster, a baker, a, a dough proofer, a dehydrator, on and on. And I use it constantly. I warm my plates before we serve dinner in it. 
potatoes and their benefits. They are full of fiber. They are nutrient dense. The different colored potatoes all have different um, antioxidants. A red, a dark red sweet potato has something called anthocyanins. Where do we find those? In blueberries. That's what makes blueberries so anti-carcinogenic. They're again satiating. And this is what I was talking about earlier. Are they fattening? Not at 350 calories a pound. You could eat a pound or two of potatoes, come in with far few cal fewer calories than you would a small steak and be so full that you are satisfied until the next meal. You're satisfied for hours and hours. Most people aren't gonna eat two pounds of potatoes, but I'm making a point here. This is even their resting spot. I always have two in the refrigerator that have been cooked and two more ready to go. This is a, a very old um, African tribal bench. And this is what I stack my vegetables on. What about grains? That's another carbohydrate. The grains are important, not because they are the, the primary source, because they aren't our, our um, strongest protein source, although some of what we call a grain, like quinoa, is a complete protein. It's actually a seed. But we get 45% of our fiber from our grains. But remember, we're talking whole grains. If you pick up a piece of bread and it says wheat bread, the first ingredient should say whole grain wheat, not wheat flour, not um, uh, oh, wheat starch, but whole grain wheat or whole grain rye or whole grain amaranth. Uh, that makes a difference. Every week, again, batch cooking, I batch cook oat groats. That is an oat before it's cut with steel to create steel cut oats or rolled to create rolled oats or pulverized to create instant oats. I want as whole grain as I can get. So I do oat groats. They're delicious. And I make my breakfast all week long from those already cooked oat groats. Quinoa, same thing. Make a big batch of quinoa. Keep that in the refrigerator. I make enough that part of it goes in the refrigerator for the week. The other part goes in the freezer. And then I have it for the following week without even having to cook more. What about legumes? Legumes are beans and pulses like, um, like lentils. And they are our primary protein source. Uh, when food intake patterns of 70-year-olds were examined in this particular um, study, the only statistically significant food indicator of longevity were legumes. Dan Buettner says that in the blue zones, every blue zone uh, consumes beans. Okinawa consumes a large amount of sweet potatoes as well. How does the little black dress relate to what I eat? In a day, let me count the ways. My outfits begin with a basic color. For me, usually black. For some of you, it may be gray or brown or golden or, or um, uh, what? Oh, let's say navy. Um, but you have a basic color, and that is in the primary pieces, like dresses, shirts, blouses, skirts, sweaters, vests, jackets. And then we have the accessories, like scarves and vests and jackets and jewelry. And in food language <laughs> that is easily translatable to the starches as the basics and then everything else the tubers and fruits and veggies and seeds and nuts and avocados and greens those are the accessories are they peripheral to the degree that they're not important no they're essential remember half of your plate for that whoa my husband looked at this and said what are you teaching them nan <laughs> I end my day in what looks like a little black dress. I have a lot of nightgowns, but I just love it so much easier to grab one of my three little black ones. I feel elegant in them. I think that they're easy to throw on and cover up when I'm walking through the house or um, going downstairs in the morning for coffee or tea with what looks like a little wrap dress. And that's actually a robe. I've had that for a couple of, well, gosh, two decades. 
and it's my favorite for travel. It's simple. And again, it's it makes things easier. The day for me begins with exercise, but actually it begins usually with a sauna. I have an infrared sauna and I'm in there first, but then whether or not I'm in my sauna, I am in my shoes and uh, again, Usually I'll grab what's basic and that is my black and I'm out the door. So what is that skirt? That is something called a skirt. It's shorts with a skirt over it. I can cycle. I love to cycle. I can cycle in that and it's still discreet. That is something that became one of my favorite pieces through these last couple of years since I found it at Costco of all places. I bought two and then the next year they had the same brand. I bought two more. And even though I got them in a couple of other patterns, I just love the black ones. So off and running, that's simply a habit that helps us live longer and better because movement is the only way our brain knows we're alive. The muscles moving or how our lymph system, because we don't have a heart for the lymphatic system, pumping that the way it does our blood, our muscles are what pumps the lymphatic fluids throughout our bodies. Back in the, gosh, well, when I was 70, I signed up for a race. I had never run in my life. And I signed up for a 10K, that's 6.2 miles. That was me on the left, having completed my 10K, that was me on the right this last uh, October, having completed a half marathon, which is 13.5 miles. And who is my buddy? That's Elena. Elena is 77 or 78 now. And she runs 10Ks almost every week as just part of her running routine. She has been a vegan for 25 years. And again, exercise is simply part of what she what we do on a regular basis. And that was the squirt <laughs> again in that picture. Elena recommended this book to me, Younger Next Year, intriguing uh, title. And I've not read a book that inspired me and taught me better about the value of exercise. The first book, it was a international bestseller New York Times bestseller, now it's in 20 languages, was published in 2012 and or 13 or 14, but there's a revision that came out in 2019. That's the one you want to look for. And that is with Alan Hamilton. He is a neurosurgeon who added some chapters to the book about what movement does for the brain. When you read this, you can do it in an audio book. There is a younger next year for women, and that's the audio book I'm listening to. It will change the way you look about at movement. Some of us think, well, I'll exercise to get thinner. Nah, it doesn't really work that way. Or they think I'll exercise because I want a beautiful body. Well, that's helpful. But to think of exercise extending life and helping you with, with clear thinking and staving off Alzheimer's and what it actually does for the brain, that's inspiring. So I recommend this. That's a black dress that I bought from Chico's years and years ago to travel in. It is a simple black sheath with a split up to the knee and it can be belted, it can be jacketed as it is on the right. It can be taken from day to night. It can be dressed up, it can be dressed down. It was one of the simplest and best decisions or the best um, outfits that I found for, well, gosh, year round use. And what I'm eating there is a cold start to the day because that is overnight oats. Well, I transitioned. What you see here on the left is the way I eat my oats now. I have my oat groats in a bowl with miso and shiitake mushrooms and spinach. I just use the super greens, those power greens that you can get at Costco at Trader Joe's in a bag. It's mixed kale and, and chard and um, sometimes beet greens. And I freeze them. And then I just take out a handful and crumble a whole bunch of that 
into the bowl with the mushrooms. That was a recipe, even though she cooks it from scratch, I already have my oats cooked. And so I just microwave them quickly. Um, and it's and I have this as a recipe, um, I believe on my YouTube channel, Nan Simonson, YouTube Nan Simonson. But I got this idea from Anne Esselstyn. Jane is Dr. Esselstyn's daughter and his wife. And they wrote this wonderful cookbook, Be a Plant-Based Woman Warrior. And this is Anne's favorite breakfast. So it's miso and nutritional yeast and shiitake mushrooms and hot sauce. And it's a savory breakfast the way actually most of the world start their days with savory breakfasts. On the other hand, the breakfast on the left is my husband's. Uh, he likes his oats in the form of rolled oats in a traditional way, hot and with berries. I thought you might like the one here on the right that would be cute for Easter, which is coming up in the next couple of days here. Pancakes. Enjoy things like pancakes. That's a whole food starch. This is simply oat flour that's ground up in my blender and then mixed with milk and flax. And well, you'll get the recipe because as you look at these foods, know that I have for you a printable on my website and that's nansimmonson.com. That's my website. Under recipes or no, under resources, you're going to see seven reasons to love the little black dress. And in that PDF, there are 42 recipe links from dishes that you're going to see today. There's also book references and even documentary references to help you see maybe enough to help you understand that a, a whole food plant-based diet might be the thing that's right for you. This is another breakfast, another savory breakfast. And this is a um, this is uh, a tofu scramble with a delicious uh, cornbread muffin, a whole grain cornbread muffin recipes available for that, as well as salsa. That's a great breakfast. That could be a lunch, that could be a dinner. And then muffins. When I'm in a hurry, I pull one of these out of the freezer. I usually double the recipe and make 24 at a time. This is a breakfast muffin, but it can be any time during the day. And what's in it? It's oats and rolled oats, some oat flour, which is what I ground up in the blender, as I mentioned earlier, but just apples and bananas and some currants and some walnuts. And they're, they're wonderful and filling. Every Sunday, we go out to eat brunch. And the problem is we don't eat out much because we can't find many restaurants that will give us, even if they're willing to give us a vegan fare, meaning absolutely no animal product, they tend to put way too much oil and way too much salt in the food. And we aren't used to that and we don't want it. And we don't like it. Well, Oasis, this vegetarian cafe in Riverside, California, doesn't do that. So every Sunday, we go and have this brunch. <laughs> it's a lot of food, isn't it? That's the point. You can eat more, weigh less on a whole food plant-based diet that is low in salt, oil, sugar. I don't add any refined sugar. I don't use any oil in most of my recipes. Um, I put a little bit of salt, but this is roasted vegetables and tofu tacos with a citrus slaw and roasted potatoes and sauteed mushrooms and hot sauce. And oh my goodness, that's good. And then we leave there and we go shopping at the farm store, 15 acres of growing lands and they pick, and this is Southern California, so we can pick all year long, come home with all of this and never waste one bit of food. It goes into a soup. It's going to be steamed or stir fried. And when I say fried anything, stir fried, that means dry saute. We'll show you what I mean. And all of my recipes tell you what I mean. And then I'm back at home and this is in my backyard. And boy, there it is again, the skort. Some cute shoes at a different top and I'm ready for the day. What am I eating outside for lunch? Well, this is a salad and I've called them salads for years, but I just heard the word nourish bowl and I love that. This is a nourish bowl. I'm gonna show you how to create it, but this is a lot of leftovers. 
This is green beans and shiitake mushroom stir fry. We've got some red bell peppers here and some apple and some beans and, and corn. And that looks like some kind of a coleslaw. This one has a red, purple, or the purple sweet potatoes and jicama. And this looks like a mango salsa, apple, and sugar snap peas. This one is just a bunch of peaches and purple sweet potato and bell pepper. And this is a no chicken salad that's made out of chickpeas. You can make it out of tofu. You can make it out of chickpeas. I have them on my website and you're getting one in my um, the PDF as well. And these are the white sweet potatoes I love so much. They call them Hannah yams or just white sweet potatoes. Um, and again, there couldn't be a more nourishing meal than this because what's underneath all of this, you'll see in just a bit. And then this is what it looks like when I'm putting out our meal. I have my nourish bowl. Tim loves the crunchiness of the pre-cooked potatoes put into an air fryer. He has a small salad every day. He just gets part of what's um, underneath mine. And then he has open face avocado sandwiches and crudités. This is a nourishing combination of foods. And you can dress it up because for Easter brunch last year, this was our brunch. We had, gosh, was it eight or 10 people over? I have the Spanish rice here. And out of the picture frame is a, um, a lentil. Uh, uh, you're going to see the recipe for that, or you'll have the recipe that for that, a lentil taco mix that goes for me as a base for soups, as well as for our tacos. We have it all the time. I'll even put the lentil um, taco filling over roasted potatoes, put some salsa and vegan sour cream and uh, gosh, great meal. A little black dress doesn't have to be a dress. It can simply be the basics. This is on the left, a, a vest, a long vest under which there's a black top as well as my shredded jeans. And I could dress up or dress that down. The right side is just black slacks and a black cami that a jacket over, again, dress up well enough that I could go to the office with that. But while we're talking about basic, let's talk about one of the most basic of the starches, and that is bread. The problem with most breads is if you don't get them whole food, meaning remember whole wheat, whole grain, whole oat, or whatever, you're getting a refined starch, and refined starches get your metabolism just like sugar. So what is this? These are my own flat bread. You'll get the recipe. And that is made out of oat, oat and water in a blender. The flat bread is delicious. And I can use it as a wrap for my sandwiches. Also, a company called Happy, uh, Happy Campers makes a whole grain. And that's hard to find with gluten-free. So I have to stay away from gluten. And most gluten-free breads, most gluten-free anything is simply a very refined starch because gluten is in so many of the grains like wheat and barley and rye and spelt and farro. Well, this is a whole grain bun. They're very expensive though. They're $3 a bun. And so I don't keep them around that often, but in my transition time away from what I'd call conventional foods, I loved having a hamburger that was, and this was not a hamburger, of course, this is a bean burger, but it sure looks like one. And that was my sour cream, my tofu sour cream that tastes somewhere in between sour cream, mayonnaise, and made this sandwich especially tasty. Split pea soup and a sandwich, that's a starchy combination and yet highly nutritious. And that's one of uh, Tim's um, avocado burger or avocado sandwiches um, that was not an open face. He's come to like the open face best. And then just leftovers from the refrigerator, coleslaw and some roasted vegetables and crudités, pizza. Pizza can be a whole food plant base. Well, not quite whole food. This is what Tim was getting every time we went to one of our local restaurants, something called California Pizza Kitchen. Problem is, 
that this cauliflower crust turned out to be bound together with mozzarella cheese. Who knew that? We didn't order cheese on the pizza, but the cauliflower crust wasn't just cauliflower, it's cauliflower cheese. But that's what you can do with a pizza crust. So occasionally we'll go to a place called Blaze where they have a vegan and gluten-free crust. That is my pizza. Now, I'm not crazy about going there simply because I know that that crust is like eating Weber's bread. Why do I say that? Well, because they make it out of starches. And I don't mean whole food starches. They make it out of tapioca, rice, potato, um, corn starches. And that's what their bread is. So that's basically a white Weber's bread. But I'll get it occasionally when I really want a pizza. I can make my own, but I've not gone to that length. But tomato sauce and then every vegetable, I can get them to pile on them and you, there. And you have to ask them two or three times, more mushrooms, please, more mushrooms, please. <laughs> We're saving them the money. Of, I don't even get vegan cheeses. They're full of oil. Uh, they're expensive ingredients, but they're not used to putting that kind of quantity of vegetables on a pizza. Gosh, if you're thinking, but man, okay, what about desserts? I love sweets. Well, this is basic and whole food. Uh, coconut, dates, almonds, ground up and rolled in ground pistachios for my luck of the Irish balls. Now, this dress is what you saw me in when I started this video. This dress I've had 25 years. Bought it decades ago. It's a lined linen and what I think is pretty about it, first of all, the black goes with anything, is the neckline. The details of that dress, the neckline, are what make it pretty. Well, you can do the same thing with your own salads. With your tossed salads, the details make the difference. This is, for example, strawberries and walnuts and beans and red onion, and then a ranch dressing. Delicious, easy to make. And the ranch dressing, I'm giving you a recipe for, of course, no oil, and of course, vegan. How about, and you saw this on one of my nourish bowls, how about black beans and corn and cilantro and red onion and tomato? A, dish, a, a, a wonderful side dish or um, uh, a wrap. And this is quinoa. Again, quinoa with beans and and flavorings and lime. And remember, quinoa is a high protein seed uh, that is a complete protein. And then a bowl of any kind. This has your quinoa and some fruit like mango and garbanzo beans and kale with a tangy citrus dressing, just wonderful. And then finally, desserts can be really healthy. This is a chia fruit pudding. You've got a recipe for a raspberry chia uh, fruit pudding. The dress now is being, um, I'll say dressed up maybe, with a sweater because things are getting a little cooler. And so let's look at warming up with the food, like heating up a rice and a bean dish as simple as it gets. How about a soup? This is a curry vegetable soup, a chickpea curry soup. This is a spicy Thai stir fry with tofu. Um, this is a roasted cherry tomato sauce into which I threw in some additional lentils. And the pasta can be one of the whole grain pastas like, like gosh, lentil or chickpea pasta or brown rice pasta. And this is one of my favorite recipes. You've got this as well. It's a South African peanut and potato stew, sweet potato stew. Oh, so good. And you can make desserts out of whole fruit. This is strawberries, cherries, and banana, all frozen and whirred up in your blender. Your Vitamix does a great job with that. There's a new kid in town, and it's called the Ninja Creamy. It's going to take some training for you to understand how to make whole foods rather than their creamy recipes. But uh, I've been using it now, not in the winter, but when I got it, I got it in the summer. And I can't believe how authentically ice cream textured fruit can be. 
This dress is actually a lace. It's an embroidered lace. It's one of the dresses that is behind me. It's a lace top, meaning a lace, lace dress over a satin uh, skirt and, and little cami type top all sewn together. And this reminds me to, as the lace is transparent, to be transparent about something that I told you I would explain to you. This is that nourish bowl. Please don't look at this and think that you have to measure everything. But this in general is how I would construct my daily bowls. And again, these things can be for dinner. They can be for lunch. They can be um, with foods out of the refrigerator that you simply happen to have. But in general, I have at least two to three hands full of leafy greens. In my case, it's arugula, kale, spinach, and quite often romaine. Then other vegetables can be steamed or roasted or raw. And then there's got to be, you want to have some protein source, which can be beans, tofu, quinoa, and, um, and then a fiber rich whole food carbohydrate like, oh gosh, it could be oat groats, it can be rice. Do you have to put all of this? No. And then a healthy fat, avocado, seeds, nuts, hummus, oil-free dressings, and I have a number of oil-free dressings on my channel. So this is the way it's done. Big bowl, that's a 16-cup bowl, almost full, not quite, with the greens, and I always add red um, cabbage, and I put shredded carrot, you could just put carrot chunks. That tool in front is called a quick cut, K-W-I-K-K-U-T. Mine was given to me when I was 17. I can't believe that anything like that has stayed in the market as long as it has, but it has because it works beautifully. I used to use it to chop up a bunch of eggs. I had hens <laughs> and I became famous for my egg salad sandwiches. Uh, I can't even imagine eating those anymore, but that is a great chopper for your lettuce because you push it through there chops it very finely and does it very quickly. You can do it in a metal bowl, but it scratches the metal, so I prefer to do it in glass. You can find that on Amazon, K-W-I-K-K-U-T, but mine was stainless steel. The one that's available now is in, uh, uh, it's aluminum, and so it feels a little bit sharper on the hand when you hold that upper part and you're pushing down. So uh, if you have a newer one, you might want to use um, like a napkin or something on your hand or it might not bother you. But this is what happens that much cut down to that put wait, to that <laughs> put into the bowl. That one on the right is Tim salad. And then I start piling on. In this case, it was chickpeas. And on the right, it is a the sweet potatoes that I like so much the deep purple sweet potatoes. Um, there is a company, Frida's Stokes, or Frida's, uh, I guess it's Stokes, part of the same word, F-R-E-I-D-A-S-S-T-O-K-E-S, -S -E purple sweet potatoes. And you can buy them on Amazon, but they're really expensive that way. I get mine from my whole food market. And then not whole foods market, but my natural foods market. And then on the left, we have some um, beets. And then I just kept building. There are um, uh, red bell peppers. And this looks like chopped potato. And so this was a real potato heavy one. And some cooked zucchini and a carrot salad I had around. Gave Tim some of my chopped jicama. And with my own um, Nan's. Uh, ranch or Nan's, um, sorry, house dressing. You're going to get that recipe too. Uh, oil free and wonderful. It doesn't mean fat free. The fats are good for you, but not too much. And the fat in this is from some tahini. But this meal over here on the right was something that I threw together for dinner one night. We had had a filling lunch. We wanted something a little lighter. Believe it or not, this is light for us. And we each had a nourish bowl. And then we made crispy, flat, almost flatbreads out of our pre-cooked, flattened out and air fried potatoes. If you don't have an air fryer, just crank up your oven and let them get good and crispy. I like sprinkling some nutritional yeast and then some salt-free seasoning on there 
before I bake them. And it, it even makes the, um, the kitchen smell great. And then if you want a dessert, ooh, doesn't a carrot cake sound good? This is a carrot cake or muffin recipe that you're getting the, the um, recipe for. And that's just a little date paste on top. Because I will tell you, if you're used to getting your desserts from uh, processed foods, from restaurants, from conventional bakers, they are loaded with fat, sugar, salt, and very, very few whole food ingredients. Everything that you see as a dessert here is a whole food product. This is simply oats and carrots and bananas and apples and applesauce. And there might be some date paste, which is a whole food because you simply turn dates and water into a paste to sweeten things up. So I would say to you, get used to less sweet and less, um, oh gosh, brain exploding <laughs> foods. What I mean by that is the sugar hits our stomach and signals a dopamine rush to our brain. And anything that sets off our brain chemistry, the dopamine makes us want not only like it, and that's the point of dopamine, it's a reward neurotransmitter, but also it's a drive neurotransmitter. It makes us want more. That's why high sugar, oil, and fat diets, sugar, oil, and fat foods make us want more and more and more. We get hooked on it. Whole food plant-based with low SOS, sugar, oil, and salt, help us get away from that and move toward the healthy foods. Same lace dress turned into a more edgy outfit with boots and a vest. Well, let's talk about an edgy uh, legume. What do I mean by that? Soy. Why is it edgy? Well, some people and even some doctors who haven't read the new literature believe that soy is dangerous. It makes man boobs. It makes creates estrogen and women will get cancer. It's exactly the opposite. It has been shown by those now in the industry, like Dr. Christy Funk, who is a breast surgeon and what they call surgeon of the stars, who went vegan when she finally did the research and said, wait a minute, my people aren't getting well because instead of telling them to eat soy, I'm telling them to stay away from it. And the soy will actually help them prevent a recurrence and keep them from getting it in many cases. So where do you find soy? Well, you find it, for example, in this luscious dipping sauce of maybe your own sushi. This is what I made one night, and that's a dipping sauce. That same dipping sauce is in a recipe that you've got that's called, um, it's, it's an easy appetizer edamame. Edamame is simply green soy. And you pop them out of those little pods, dip the pod, and then pop it out with your teeth. And so you get the sauce in your mouth that way. And oh my gosh, is that yummy. This is soy uh, or tofu that I make into a feta cheese that I can put on salads and um, have as an appetizer on a slice of, you won't believe this, it's really good. If you have some big fat radishes and thin slice them, a piece of radish, I think, is as good as a cracker with a piece of um, this kind of briny um, uh, tofu feta. Really good. You can roast tofu in a pan, uh, dry saute that. You can uh, air fry tofu. And then it's like picking up a piece of meat and eating it. And here are a couple of other recipes you're getting. This one on the left is a non-chicken, chicken finger, southern chicken finger fry, again, air fried or oven fried. The one on the right is a general Tao Chinese stir fry. Again, never oil in our stir fries. Made both of these out of soy curls. If you get soy curls, I can get them from my natural whole food store. I would say to you, if you're going to get them online, use or get the butler brand i got my first order was from a chinese company i wasn't happy with the results of that but butler brand has been making soy curls for decades 
They make them out of um, Portland, Oregon. And soy curls are simply soy that's been dried out and formed. So it is a whole food that's plant-based, loaded with fiber as well as um, protein. And why do I have this dessert here? Well, besides the fact that it's good and it's chocolate, it's also soy. It's a silken soy with some date paste and vanilla, and it's a delicious pudding. All right. The weather is getting cold, and I, I'm putting on a little bit more to keep warm. This is a basic dress. Let's talk about some basics. Soup again. This is a split pea soup, split pea vegetable soup. So warming and delicious. And a Seventh Day Adventist uh, soup that Dan Butner has in his new Blue Zones America cookbook. This is a simple chickpea and noodle brothy soup, simple to put together and really yummy. And this is a, a lentil vegetable soup. And this is one of my favorite, it's pozzoli. If you know pozzoli, it's a hominy-based brothy soup that is usually made with pork. Well, there's no pork going on around here, but this is so good. The basic pozzoli, and this recipe is on my website. I don't know if it's in the collection I gave you, but if it's not, it's on my website, nansimmonson.com. And the fun of it is we had, oh, what, 10 people over for dinner, big pot of pozzoli. Everybody got a bowl of pozzoli. And then in the middle, like that taco bar I had, we had onion and lime and cilantro and olives and uh, vegan sour cream and and chopped avocado and salsa and pico de gallo and all of that is piled on there and then soft corn tortillas what a feast yes you can dress up and take it anywhere with whole foods that are plant-based and to make a meal really fun how about a a tag along to a soup like a fritter this is a zucchini fritter again starch based but loaded with zucchini and very easy to make. You've got that recipe and this one. This is a bread, it's a gluten-free bread, very dense, very tasty, of quinoa, buckwheat, oats, and buckwheat, oat, quinoa. Mm, there's one more grain in there and I can't think of what it is. It might be flax, but you've got the recipe and try it, it's really good and it freezes well. And this is the flatbed bread I was showing you earlier as a sandwich wrap. We went on a holiday and I brought these with me for the holiday because I could eat them when we were going out hiking with a, a nut butter and a fruit spread. Um, it was easy to take with me. And um, I even made some while I was there just by whipping up some oats and some water and using a pan to make them. And you saw this earlier with the um, tofu scramble. These are a whole grain muffin, uh, corn muffin, yum, yum. Okay, same dress, but boy, it's really cold outside. So I'm gonna do some substantial foods with this, like a meatloaf. You're gonna have a recipe for a carrot meatloaf, but there are a lot of lentil meatloafs out there that are wonderful. This is polenta. Polenta is like a, well, it's like grits, but the Italian form, <laughs> heavier. And, and um, a lot of polenta is made with cream and, and um, Parmesan cheese. And no, 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 don't do any of that with your polenta. It's great as a side, a filling starch-based side to something like this, a stir fry, again, no oil, and any of my recipes will tell you how to do that. That's dry saute that is perfect and gives you as much flavor as any oil can. And this is um, mushrooms and onions and um, beans along with polenta. This is a big squash and it's filled with a combination of grains and, and um, kale and carrots and celery and beans. And again, what a satisfying meal. And then this one is one of my all-time favorites up in that right, sorry, left upper corner. That is a portobello mushroom 
uh, pot roast. Oh, so great. And you're getting the recipe. And then on the right, I have a, a um, cauliflower steak. <laughs> That's on my website. And on the left lower, I have a, um, I believe that is one of my um, uh, Brussels sprout dishes. So does that look like the kind of meal that you have to kind of hide away from company? Heck no. Dress it up, dress it down. Uh, filling, satisfying, uh, goes with anything. Oh, yeah. And you can see by the number of plates there, looks like we were having some people over or a couple of people over. And this is something new that I'm going to be doing. Watch for it. It will be posted the week of, well, the first week of April. And this is stuffed shells. The shells are stuffed with something like a very well seasoned ricotta. And the fun with this recipe is that it is, um, actually that won't come out until the second week of April, but it's, it's um, stuffed the shells before you cook them. And then you roast the, the entire pan, bake the entire pan in the tomato sauce. And oh gosh, it's perfect, it's delicious, look for the recipe. And then this is simply a whip. This is a whip with some yogurt and some, uh, and you can pull things like this together. Yogurt, date paste, um, and fruit, strawberries and cherries. Fresh fruit, well, as a dessert. And then can you be strong on a whole food plant-based diet? Absolutely. What does it? Mainly, but not exclusively legumes, your beans. This is a um, scarlet runner bean. You can see down on the, the table below the bowl. Scarlet runner beans are big. And when they're soaked and cooked, they are like a big, chewy, delicious. It's almost like a piece of meat, but I don't want meat. <laughs> but they have that kind of satisfying mouthfeel. This is as basic, as basic as you get Cuban uh, Cuban pinto beans or any kind of a, a, a pinto bean recipe, salsa down the middle, and a, a, a combination of rices, just rice and beans and salsa. Doesn't get any easier or base, more basic, but really, really satisfying. And then we have a red lentil chili. You've got this recipe. The last time I had it, it was so spicy, I had to kind of uh, I think I overspiced when I made it initially. And all of these, if I'm going to take the time to make a soup or a stew, almost all of them, I will make double, sometimes triple, freeze them. They're into my freezer library, as I call it. So I can go out and pull out. I'll take one of these and one of these and one of these, take it to the refrigerator, defrost it, and I've got meals for the next couple of days. And the other thing I wanted to say is, and this is what I did with this, I had only frozen a cup and a half of that. So what I did is I added a lot of broth. I chopped up some carrot and steamed that quickly. I did that in the microwave, added that to it, and some chopped potato, some cubed potato, because we always have that around that's already cooked. And so I made it more soupy, and it kind of, it, it, it um, well, for one thing, it diluted the spiciness, but this is really a nice recipe. Just watch the spices. Served it with baked chips, some onions, some guacamole, and yum. And this is another that is an easy dish to do because it's a mushroom, black, uh, it's a black bean mushroom chili of Chef AJ's. And you throw all of this into the Instapot and you'll have the recipe and cooks up quickly. I added some corn. I don't know if she has corn in hers, but there's salsa in it and some uh, chopped uh, green onion and it doesn't get better. And then finally, to do things simply, you can take almost any one of those, thicken it up with some grains, some rice, uh, uh, oat groats, whatever you have on hand, and then stuff a bell pepper and bake that in your air fryer or your uh, toaster oven or in the regular oven. Put a sauce on it like the sour cream, the vegan sour cream, some salsa, and it's a really good meal and very, very healthy. And then finally, this is the, la is the dessert that I had on my last birthday. 
which I I did a video of my 72nd birthday and my 70th birthday right after my book was published. And it is a double chocolate cake in a cup. Takes one minute in the microwave. Very well worth doing. I won't eat the whole thing, not because it's not healthy, because it is all whole food, but it's kind of calorically dense. And I'll have half, Tim will have half, and you don't need more than that. It's that good. This is a little jacket I bought, a little silk lightweight jacket I bought in India. And again, with a little black dress, anything goes with it. So I want to talk about lightweight. And I'll talk about the potato at 350, 350 calories a cup. Now, I don't count calories. I haven't had to for five years, and I've been able to maintain a lean body. But at 350 a pound, and I'll in general say that grains are about 450 to five and beans and legumes are about 550 to six a pound cooked. They are a lightweight in the starch category. So you cook them ahead, you bake them or air fry them, have them as a snack, have them as a meal. This is a baked potato with some roasted chickpea and some onion and the sour cream salsa and cooked greens. These are killer mashed potatoes. You're getting this recipe. It is by volume, not quite half, but almost half cauliflower, made creamy with cashews. And it is one of the best ways to eat a mashed potato, full of garlic. You don't have to put the garlic, but you would think you're eating sinful mashed potatoes. And they are half cauliflower almost, potato, which is by itself a lighter starch, and throw over it sauteed mushrooms and those mushrooms have no fat in them at all put some asparagus with it you'll feel like you're at a top ranked restaurant and basically it's inexpensive food that's the value of the little black dress and whole food plant-based starches now this is my purple sweet potato and i can't tell what i have on it I think I've got whatever I had in the refrigerator. I think on the far right of that plate was roasted vegetables. I think down the middle is some kind of a grain dish. And then I have the purple sweet potatoes. And then I have a a, a, a coleslaw on the upper left-hand corner and fresh fruit. That's kiwi and oranges on the right. Perfect meal. And cheese sauces, look for cheese sauces. Just about any vegan cheese sauce is delicious. I have one on my website as well. And the cheese sauce over broccoli, cauliflower, the the um, cauliflower mashed potatoes. Um, this looks like a baked potato with mushrooms on that. Great meal. Ooh, why am I showing you brownies on this grouping? Well, because these brownies are sweetened with sweet potato. <laughs> it's oat, sweet potato, date paste, and they are fabulous. It's a very fudgy brownie. Yep, you're getting the recipe. And then the colors of the rainbow. The, this jacket doesn't quite have all the colors, but now I've thrown in some colorful shoes and it is a chance for me to remind you that the best way to feed your, your microbiome is with fiber. It's the only way. But also, the more colors, the more phytonutrients, phytochemicals, but also the variety of colors help you build a very diverse microbiome, which is our goal. 30 different fruits and vegetables and plant foods a week is ideal. Well, just go for a bunch of color. So this is a stir fry of just a bunch of vegetables. And I put in some, um, oh gosh, shredded ginger and um, tamari sauce. And this is one that is a, that last one was a Thai flavor. This one was more of a Chinese flavor. And I did this, or a Japanese flavor. I did it over sobo noodles. Again, these are just things thrown together. And this is beans and mushrooms and vegetables over noodles. This is another tofu scramble. This was something fun that I tried. These little um, corn tortillas sort of sliced down the middle and then folded around and baked in a muffin cup. And 
They were very cute. I won't do it again. It's just too much trouble. But look how cute they were. Again, fun things you can do with starches. And corn tortillas are fine. I look for the organic and um, gluten-free. Now, corn doesn't have gluten, but a lot of the processing that is used to in a plant if they are processing like a flour tortilla, you're going to have flour mixed in with that. And then this is the lentil uh, the taco mix that I was talking about. Very easy to throw together and good enough to serve it over a potato or with rice or in a burrito um, with all of the things that you would add to a burrito like salsa and shredded cabbage, things like that. Dress it up, dress it down. There are your tacos. That was our home. We didn't have to go out for those. And if you're getting a lot of color from your food, you don't have to get it from your dessert. This may not be colorful, but this is so yummy. This is Chef AJ's tr uh, triple apple cake. It's dried apple, applesauce, and, um, oh, and apple chunks. Really, really tasty. And then this jacket. Reminds me to thank Chef AJ. <laughs> this is an ode to AJ. Uh, I wore this for my 70th birthday, and she did a special show. It was the fourth time the two of us were on a show together. She had interviewed me three times, and it was on my birthday, January 9th, that she had a show to um, announce my audiobook, which had just come out in time for my birthday. So I have the in, the original that came out in December of 2020, the audio book that came out in January of 2023. And my intent there was to double down on my message that, again, I'm watching the world get sicker by the day, and we don't have to. We can age powerfully and actually be younger next year by adopting some of these precepts. And this is a ode to Chef AJ as well, because I want to tell you that Chef AJ doesn't eat beans and she doesn't eat nuts. And she's very careful with the fats in her food like avocado. And yet she is healthier than she's been in her entire life. She does it on potatoes, she does it on greens, and she does it on um, grains that she loves, like rice. So this is my purple sweet potato. Uh, just a reminder that something like this, something as simple as this, can be a delicious appetizer. And that is my roasted red pepper hummus on a purple sweet potato. Doesn't get better than that. This is a... Actually, you know what it looks like I did? It looks like I took that black bean and carrot, I'm sorry, and um, corn salad and added some grains, heated it up and made a hot dish out of it with some vegetables as well as the sweet potatoes. And this is sweet potatoes, the purple as well as the red with salsa and steamed greens and a bunch of onion and cilantro, yum. And then, what the heck have I done here? Well, that's the same little black dress under which I put leggings and a kind of gauzy tiger uh, blouse and some oh, edgy shoes. What is that about? Well, I got a little wild. I kind of went wild and I did this. Did I eat cheese? I don't eat dairy. No, I started making cheese. I don't have any of those recipes I'm sharing with you, but they are on my web, or my YouTube channel, and it's YouTube and Nan Simonson. Well, it's whole food. The thing is that it was a high-fat, high-salt whole food, and it caused trouble. Now, what do I mean by that? It was delicious. I had the best time making them. It was so much fun to go back to having cheeses and crackers and and um, that mouthfeel. Well, the problem is that I went wild because that's what happens when you have oil, salt, and sugar. No sugar in them, but I would make whole trays of cheeses. 
I went to party after party or get together after get together with my crudite cheese tray. And I got so used to eating crackers and cheeses and, and that whole well, snack thing. If you eat a starch based meal, you will be satisfied from one meal to the next. The other thing my husband and I do is that we what what is called intermittent fast or time restricted um, feeding. And that is we eat dinner early. We're usually finished by 630. I don't eat again until 830 after I've sauntered, exercised and 830 dinner. You saw the savory oats. That's a 14 hour window of time with no food at all. That is excellent for our body. Dr. Walter Longo, who is an internationally known expert on fasting, said everybody can and should. Now, I shouldn't say that to you as a medical person because I'm not, but he says can and should, unless there are certain situations like a insulin dependent diabetic who is what they call a brittle diabetic, can go 12 hours fasted. Well, think of what that does. That stops all the snacking that goes on all through the evening with most people as they watch TV. The eating and snacking in between meals we don't need to do. Well, I started snacking. And what happened is I gained like three to four pounds, which you're going to think, oh, big deal. Well, you gain three or four and you gain three or four and you gain three or four. And before you know it, you're fighting not only not being able to get in what's in or get on what's in your closet, but you're also starting to fight having to then take it off, which is what I didn't want to do. I caught it right away. I knew exactly what I was doing. And I simply cut out the nuts and I cut out the, the crackers and I cut out the snacks and that all went away. So why am I showing you date paste to let you know that one of the best ways to sweeten your food is with date paste. It's a whole food um, sweetener. This is something made not from date paste, but with the help of date paste. That is a either pumpkin or sweet potato pie. You could use either one of them. I think I used pumpkin in this one. The crust is dates and pecans. It's delicious. And yes, you can eat like this. I can eat this and I'm not damaging my body as I would if I ate a processed food with fake food. My body didn't know what to do with, but it's still calorically dense. And I'll tell you something about me. Again, I used to have an eating disorder. If I get started on sweets, I want sweets, even if they're whole food plant-based. I don't know about you, but then I'll want some more of it. Then I'll want some more of it. Then I'll want some more of it. I don't need that. So I make it. We use it when we have company once in a while, those ultra sweet things. Otherwise, I stay with the simple stuff like fruit. Every woman needs a little black dress. That means every woman needs something basic that you look great in, that you can go anywhere with, that you can dress up, dress down. You can put anything on black. Beauty begins the moment you decide to be yourself. And I'll tell you something, we are being individuals when we celebrate a whole food plant-based diet because just about everything you see on media is trying to sell you on eating the way most Americans do. Be yourself, do it the way you want to do it, but consider doing it. Being herself for Audrey Hepburn uh, was her role in um, Breakfast at Tiffany. We all thought that she was the most together person. And if you're too young to know what I'm talking about, you may want to look for this movie. It was really a lot of fun. Uh, and then we found out that she was actually very brittle and challenges uh, in her life were what drove her to look ultra sophisticated. Um, but she got that through that. Well, somebody else who had some challenges, Princess Diana, came out uh, soon after the challenge of the divorce with her and uh, well, he's now king of England uh, of, with Charles. And do you know what they call this dress? They call it her revenge dress. Isn't that great? <laughs> Go, Diana. 
little black revenge dress and Meghan Markle when she became princess. She had her little black dress, fitted top, flared bottom, looked every bit the princess. Oh, Michelle Obama, uh, as they say, this was a twist on her more refined style, uh, edgy neckline. This dress got a lot of attention. Versace got a lot of attention for designing it, but uh, Elizabeth Hurley was thrust into the spotlight wearing this safety pin dress. And again, you may not be old enough to even remember any of this or know who Cher is, but this was her take on the little black dress. She made it her own. I highly admire Dr. Jane Goodall, Dame Dr. Jane Goodall, and she's rocking her black dress. It's a black knit sheath over which she simply put a shawl. And she has a new book out, Eat Meatless, that is a terrific cookbook for those of us that are 100% or even going there, whole food, plant-based. Believe in yourself so strongly that the world can't help but believe in you. That's what I'm hoping for. I am so determined to help people understand that, man, it just doesn't have to be the way we see things going in our country and in our world people getting sicker and more broken by the day. I walk around, I look around, and I think, gosh, it doesn't have to be this way. You can take very good care of yourself, love yourself, love your body, love your health, and have decades more ahead of you by making some pretty simple choices. It's as easy as throwing on a little black dress. <laughs> Throw down a plate of whole food plant-based starches, some accessories, and man, you've got a meal. And that picture on the right is really how I'm very comfortable as well. Just the basics, jeans and a little black top. Dress how you want to be addressed. Remember that we are putting ourselves out every time, putting ourselves out there every time we get dressed and go out. Fashion fades, only style remains the same. I'm talking lifestyle. That's why I call it a whole food plant-based lifestyle because it has to do with lifestyle as medicine. The amount of sleep we get, our connection with other people, the amount of movement we get, and our nourishment. Those are the pillars of lifestyle as medicine. Whole food, plant-based, is the direction I encourage you to go. In order to be irreplaceable, you must always be different. Let's be different than what we see around us. So this was the cover, is the cover of my new audio book. You can find that on Amazon as well or Audible. And I thank you for joining me today. So I hope you enjoyed that. You can see over my shoulder the lace dress and the Michael Kors little black dress over that shoulder. <laughs> that was the eyelet dress that was in the first slide. And I hope that you enjoyed this. I hope that you help spread the word. Share this with people unless you think it's too silly. Uh, subscribe to my channel because the more people that subscribe, the more people can find our message. And I very much appreciate that you're still on and that you um, are following at least part of what we're saying. Thank you. Have a great day because you know I'm going to. And um, give it a thumbs up. Bye-bye. <laughs>